Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. So today we're designing for Emma and Adam, and I think what they've done here is great. Their renovation was clearly not inexpensive. They've redone all their floors after removing a whole bunch of walls, and the whole place glows with the light that's coming in from both sides of the house. The problem that we're going to address is how they're going to rearrange their existing furniture. Hi Shelter, my name is Emma and I live in lovely Toronto, Ontario in Canada with my partner Adam, our 16 month old son Jack and our dog Bowie. I think the problem that we're having is we're trying to fit our pre-existing furniture into this space and it's just not working. It's not making good use of the space or the layout and what we'd like to get out of the project is just better use of the space where if there is kids toys kind of lying around we can put them away quickly but really a cozy adult appropriate space where we can retreat to at the end of the day and watch TV and both be able to see the TV properly, which right now we can't do. So really that's what we need help with. And I'm very excited to see what Shelter is able to come up with for us. Looking at the space right off the top, I think it looks great. Um, I like it because there's a lot of natural light coming in. It's refracting off of the walls and the floor and it's suffusing the whole space with a kind of glowy, warm light. That's what homeowners usually go for when they embrace the open floor concept because it really lets light come in from both sides of the house. Because this is going to be a TV viewing room, Emma and Adam have already installed the TV on top of the fireplace and hope to one day install a mantle. But I'm happy they've written in at this tender juncture because I'm going to tell them not to install that mantle. The television really should be as close to eye height as possible. I find that a very high television like this limits the viewing uh, angle of a TV because it's just so high that really only the people directly in front of it have any chance of TV viewing in a comfortable way. Yes, that's going to leave some holes in the brick for where it was installed initially, but I've got a plan to cover that as well. What I'm gonna propose is actually a solution that keeps all of their existing furniture, and then over time, they can replace them as need be, but I want them to spend their money on someplace unexpected. So, as with all projects, it all starts with the plan. What's interesting here is there are no walls, of course, we've already addressed this, but there is one wall, which is the one that separates the entry foyer from this living room space. Now, the fact that they kept this wall is clearly so that a sense of space is given to this living room area, because if that wall hadn't been there, then the living room and the entry would sort of all be one and because we've got a tiled entryway as well, it's not sort of keeping the level of design in the living room elevated if the front door is leading right into it with a tile floor. So it's actually quite an interesting little mini wall that they've kept there. It gives the room a sense of space and it gives a tiny bit of opportunity for us to push furniture against a wall, which is normally how we position furniture. So what they've done here is place the sofa with its back against the bay window. Also, the problem here is they're looking at the TV at an awkward angle. What obviously this space needs is for seating to be on the other side of the TV. If we were to take this sofa and move it to the other side and push it against the wall and center it on the TV, you'll notice what happens. The entrance into the living room is blocked. And that's probably the main issue that Emma and Adam ran into here when they were first trying to arrange the furniture in this open concept room. By putting the main sofa against the small wall that still remains, you get a TV viewing room that works functionally, but the entrance to the room no longer works. This little space right here actually has a lot of pressure on it. The main entrance pushes into it and the main staircase of the house comes down to it. So really we can't block this space at all for two reasons, two big reasons. The other reason of course is we want people to enter the living room without too much worry. Another problem that I see in this room is this very heavy coffee table right in the center. So I wanna change out the coffee table. Since we're gonna keep these two heirloom chairs, I figure they need to work functionally in the room. 
this chair on this side right here in the nook of the staircase is not being used at all. It's being used decoratively, but it's pushed far away from the rest of the living room, which to me says no one is really welcome to sit there. It's just kept there for looks. One thing I want to point out is there's a lot of eclectic furniture here that has different styles working with one another. I don't mind the look. It's sort of a salon look where you've collected objects and curios in your travels over your lifetime, and this living room is the space to show them all off together. That's a kind of a cool look, but you gotta make sure that they do work together, and I think there's just too much of a disconnect between this light fixture and the chair that we wanna keep. So, we're gonna get rid of that light fixture. So, so far, we're getting rid of a lamp, we're replacing a coffee table, and we're lowering the height of the television. What we have not done so far is rearrange any of the furniture, and that we do in the plan. My recommendation to you, Emma and Adam, is to try out this furniture layout that I'm about to show you. Rotate the sofa around so it's facing the TV but has lots of space between it and this wall. Move the occasional chair that's in the nook of the staircase over to the far corner to the right of the fireplace and see what that feels like. That's it. Two quick moves. What's not going to feel good is that everything's going to be floating in the middle of the room. So we're gonna propose something to fix that. But here's your layout before one additional crucial component is incorporated. But before we get to that, you can try this out and see how it feels this afternoon. I think it's gonna work. It's gonna give just enough space between the sofa and the TV for comfortable viewing. These two chairs are gonna be given pride of place on either side of the fireplace. And because their styles already are clashing, by putting them on either side of a fireplace, it's almost like you're announcing them to the room. You love both of these pieces of furniture. We're gonna let you keep them, but we have to make the rest of the room work with them as well. So, what is this one missing crucial component that's gonna tie all of this together? The key move here is to take this tiny little wall right here and thicken it up. Make it a wall that has storage inside of it. By taking this wall and pushing it into the living room space just a little bit is going to give you opportunities for storage both on the living room side and on the entry foyer side. So on the living room side, you can have storage that shows off the things that you want to show off. And then in the foyer side, the storage space that you absolutely need. Is it shoes? Is it toy storage? Something where you can quickly go into that tiled space, hide the storage, and then the adult space is ready for evening hangouts. So what would that wall look like? 24 inches of space is going to give you living room storage right there. And then inside, on the foyer side, lower than the living room storage, we've got a full two foot deep storage space. So let's see what this space looks like. And here's your final space. This thickened wall has two kinds of storage working for it. Facing into the living room, we have sort of aesthetic storage that's pretty to look at. Whether it's books, whether it's games, whether it's curios you've collected, whether it's uh, vases and plants, this is going to be pretty storage that elevates the style of the room. Take a look at what's above the now much lower television. The hierarchy that we've got on this chimney space is we've got the fireplace insert on the bottom, we've got the television directly overhead, no mantle, um, and make sure that there's not too much heat being kicked off this thing. You don't want to hurt the television, but I think maybe nine or ten inches above the fireplace is probably a good space for the TV. The third thing on the chimney volume is art. This is going to help you hide the holes that you've already created in the brick to hang the television tall. Um, and it's a great opportunity for more art. You've got this big brick volume, might as well put more stuff on it. Um, what I've found for you is some skateboard decks. This is from First Dibs, a beautiful piece of art that I think you're going to like inside your space. So I thought this would be a kind of a cool look, but of course, it's completely up to you. What I've changed out is the light fixture next to one of the occasional chairs, this guy right here. Now for me, what this helps us with is before you also had a small stool that sort of worked as a table next to this chair, this has a built-in table underneath the light surface, so that's great for coffee cups, etc. The light itself is not super um, attention grabbing, which when you have so many different objects all vying for their own kind of attention, sometimes a light fixture that takes a step back is what's needed. Here is that Ruben Board floor lamp that I found. The Winford floor lamp works super well. I always tend to draw a throw in the drawings just because it breaks up the, the sort of visual monotony. But in this case, 
I think this throw is especially important and you can see why. Because the circulation of this area forces this zigzag out into the space, in this section of the circulation plan, you're gonna see the back of this couch and it needs to be a purposeful back of couch. Now I know you're gonna eventually replace this couch and that's great, but no matter what couch goes there, you have to consider what the back of it looks like as far as its visibility is concerned right here. Let's see another view of the same room, this time from inside. The coffee table I found from you is from Lulu and Georgia. And what I like about it is that it's lightweight, it's also visually light, and it's also oval shaped, which makes it much easier to circulate around, especially when you've got a slightly tighter space than when you have currently. This becomes a cozy television viewing room for adults by evening, and by day, this coffee table is simply a slab of wood on top of some legs. No storage, it's easy to move around. So move it around for Jack, have him play in the space, and when Jack is done, you can place all his toys inside a basket and put it inside the storage at the bottom side of this new built-in. Let's see what that built-in actually looks like. This new built-in that we're gonna build in the middle of your space is gonna have paneling details that tie in with the rest of the house and storage that's below eye level that basically will disappear. It's perfect for toy storage while Jack is still young. And then as Jack grows up, you can change the functionality of the storage to be shoes, you can put a cabinet front on it, whatever, it becomes very flexible. We've got another perspective. The circulation pattern, I just wanna point out, is so crucial for this space because you've got the staircase, the entrance to the house, and the access to the rest of the house all converging in this one area right here, which is why it's been so difficult for you to put furniture in this space. But I think it makes sense now that we've pushed this sofa into the circulation space that you can still see this zigzag and how well it works. Yes, it's gonna mean some navigating in and out, but these are the sacrifices you've made for the benefit of not having any walls blocking any light in your living room space. Look how important the curtains are. Yes, it would work without the curtains, just like the space would work also without this thickened wall detail, but those two crucial details are gonna make the whole thing come together. The curtains effectively accentuate this bay window. Without them, all those windows are exposed, and yes, that maximizes light, but you lose an opportunity to add a decorative touch that accentuates this beautiful architectural feature that you've got going. And then by thickening the wall and adding these beautiful molding details, you're basically keeping the style of aesthetic elevated no matter where you look. This was an eye-opening experience for me because I was looking at an open concept space and realizing that the one wall remaining looked like it was out of place. It looked like it was just a visual screen between what was nice and what didn't want to be seen. But by thickening that wall up, we give it not only the function of storage inside of it, but a real reason for being there. The hidden reason being, it's the wall behind the sofa that gives the sofa a reason to be in the middle of the room. I hope this answered all your questions. If not, put a few down below and let's talk some design. And I can't wait to see what the next problem that we're gonna to solve together on In The Room will be. Till then. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at Shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.